So, um, brother Gil, did you did you want to share something real quick? I know you I know you're on the road. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly fine. Okay. Um, I wanted to read a scripture here, verse here that that I love have put in my heart from Luke chapter twelve. Um, it's talking about s several different things as far as the Lord's return, but what we see here that within the Lord's return, how He's He tells us to, to be looking for that it shouldn't be we shouldn't be caught caught unawares of what's going to happen, and it just you had just mentioned a few right there, and before you we did this broadcast there it was we were just going back and forth myself Sister Cheryl. And even you we were just talking about the, how the crime is so rampant nowadays that here in New York City, for those who didn't hear, who are just joining in, uh, we live in a very hostile environment here. And uh, the people here are just like, you know, like you're in a jungle and it's like a kill or be, be killed. And, you know, if you're in a hostile environment, you're going to try to adapt to your environment. Otherwise, you'll get swallowed up by your environment. So everybody here is basically trying to survive. Um, and the crime, as I mentioned, is very, very prevalent and is expanding. There are more territories and that uh, the enemy is taking over because the church has not done its job. And what we have seen is the church has closed, closed themselves in and there's such a dying world and we're not changing uh, territories. We're not changing communities. We're not changing anything but ourselves. And within our community here is what the gospel is all about, is reaching out and, and going out and, and, you know, sharing the gospel. And we have failed. And I think I spoke about this uh, the last time. But to recapture it, I, I mean, it just keeps coming to mind because that's all you see. There's such a hunger uh, for those who want God. And, and we, they want the Lord. We, we think that it's, it's, it's going to be tough and we, we, have, we make all kinds of excuses why we can't do this, but it's not as hard, not as difficult as we we make it seem, because the Lord has already did all the work. He's done everything. You know what else must us for do is just to tell everyone else what He's done, and maybe as we begin to do that, and then we'll have what we want, and then churches will begin to grow. But what churches are doing, they're taking another means of making their growth go. So they want to uh, give out food. They want to give out clothing. They want to do all these other things but preach the gospel. And lo and behold, you can do that. And I'm not seeing anything wrong with that, but within itself, that doesn't really do much because once the clothes are worn and once the food is eaten, there you don't, you're back to square one. You don't, you're empty. You don't have much. But how many of you know that the, the gospel is living word, is living bread, and it's forever. It, it lasts forever. And it's something you can take with you. It's not something that you use for once or twice and it's gone. And, and it's something that, again, is eternal. It's everlasting. So what we need to do, as the Lord has showing us these signs, we have to even be more aggressive with the, with the gospel. And again, we're not doing that. We, are, again, has failed as a church, and that's the reason why, we, again, why we're in the condition we are. And only thing that can make America great, as Donald Trump, he's proclaiming, is Jesus. Jesus is going to make America great, not Donald Trump, not politics, not this or that. Jesus Christ is what's going to make America great because America is, is under judgment. And I have mentioned this before when I was on the show of all the prophecies that I had read about. There were eight of them coming to America. And then I did one not too long ago on um, Periscope about some other stuff that I had just re recently learned. If you have not uh, watched that uh, Periscope video, I invite you to go to my channel on YouTube. Uh, www.youtube.com uh, forward slash messianic safari and you can go there and watch that video and you'll see more stuff that the Lord had revealed to many other uh, prophets and many other people uh, as, as analysts, financial analysts, analysts and what they speculate of what's to occur very very shortly and again if we could us just change it the way um, Hezekiah was able to change his lifespan. If you don't know the story, in the book of Isaiah, he prayed. And, and he prayed for 15 more years to live a little longer because his life was going to be cut short. 
And lo and behold, the Lord gave past judgment on this man because he was not doing what God had told him to do. And he had walked away because he compromised. And he was ready that his life was going to be terminated. But lo and behold, he had something about him. He had a repentant heart. And he asked the Lord, um, if you would just give me another, sh another shot, so to speak. I'm paraphrasing. But he did. And Isaiah comes back and he said, the Lord has granted you 15 more years to get your house in order, and not only your house in order, yourself in order. So I believe this nation is has to has an has a chance to get its house in order if we they do that and come to Christ. These Trump rallies, what you see happening, all you see is violence. You see a division going on there. You see people, you see races coming against each other. And to me, it just looks like the devil's playground to stir up more dissension, more strife amongst people of this nation. It's not solving a thing. It's bringing up more problems. That's what's going to give the uh, people an excuse to turn against the whites and the blacks, the Hispanics. And the enemy is using that as all as ammunition to come against each other. And unfortunately, many Christian leaders and pastors, what they are doing, um, they're joining the show. They're coming up, coming around and say, let's protest with them. Um, not too long ago, I have come across a, a, I don't have it in front of me. There was a proverb that I had read, and the Lord spoke to me through this proverb, and it said something to the effect about protest. That's, it doesn't say protest, but if you read the verse, it's basically saying to that effect that not to go against the king, not to go against governments, not to go against authority. And what Christian people, leadership are doing, they are protesting along with these Donald Trump protesters and all these other people, whatever they be, Hillary Clinton, Democratic, Republican, whatever the case may be, the protesting, it doesn't do nothing but just stir up strife, anger, animosity, and nothing. It doesn't, it's not helpful, it's not enduring. But if these Christian leaders would just get together and start praying and start protesting, then we could begin to start shift, shifting things in the, in the heavenlies. But a lot of them are not doing that. What we have done is we're doing it by earthly means and carnal means. And we know that's not going to do anything because this will worsen not against flesh and blood, but what? Against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. wickedness. There is spiritual wickedness, but they're in high places. And if they're in high places, they have to be brought down to low places. Hello. Then we're not doing that. We're not bringing down anything. We're going back and forth and we're using carnal means, which doesn't help us. We don't change things by carnal means the carnal mind as the bible says is what is enmity with god does not submit to god's law but again we have to use spiritual tactics to, to, to change spiritual climates spiritual climates are not changed by uh, by doing them uh in the physical nothing changes in the physical only things happen when we men would pray second chronicles 714 is a very familiar passage but it's something that we have ignored we've thrown it out the window if you're not familiar with the verse, it says, my people will call by my name, will humble themselves and do what? Protest? No. It says they will come together and pray. You see, we need more Christian prayer warriors, not Christian protesters, because, again, it doesn't change anything. So when I was reading this verse of Scripture today, um, I want to share with you from the, from the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 12. And, again, Jesus uh, prophesies and reveals some stuff to Peter because Peter, and even in his day, was concerned. He was concerned with the Roman Empire, which was trying to take over. And they were, and they were in authority, and they were a, a, a wicked uh, empire, a corrupt empire, perverse empire. And what do you see? You see the same things today in America. You see corruption. You see perverseness. You know all about the gender issue, the bathroom issue. We know all about the LGBT uh, all over. They have more rights than us. All, all these people that are have gender issues have more rights than most most Americans. Uh, the devil has an interesting tactic that he's defending all the sinful lifestyles and America's welcoming them in. And um, and this is going to uh, even get worse. As the Bible says, what? Perilous times, what? Will come. They're not going to come, but they are coming. And most of them are here, and it's going to get even worse. So when I was reading Luke chapter 12, and I'm going to read it to you right, right here, if I may, it says in uh, verse 37, Jesus, he's been to say, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and he will come forth and serve them. Verse 38. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good man of the house 
had known what hour the thief would come, he would have had watch and not have suffered the house to be broken through. Be they therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord said, When then his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give him their portion of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, the Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat his men servants and maidens, and to eat, and to drink, and be drunken. The law of that servant will come in a day when he look at him not for him, in an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him asunder, and will appoint him his portion with unbelievers. And that servant, which he knew the Lord's will, and prepared him not himself, neither did he, according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did not commit things worthy of strife shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him, much is required. And to whom have committed much of him, they will ask the more. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what I will it be already kindled. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and I am I straightened till it be accomplished. Suppose ye that I am coming to give you peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. Far from thenceforth there, there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, and the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said unto the people, When ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straight ye, uh, straightway ye say, There cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye did not discern this sign? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, and thou art in thy way, give diligence thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hail, hail, hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. And I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence, till thou hast paid the very last might. Here Jesus is telling people again what to look for and what's going to happen. And this is already happening, as I said before, in many of our, uh, our family. We see a, a great division because of religion. We see a great division because kids have been rising up with such a rebellious spirit that they don't want God. We, they don't want Jesus Christ. There is a millennial age here that is right now in our, in our city, but it's a different spirit that has been, that's changing. The, the, the Antichrist spirit, as the Bible said, is already here. But for some reason, this anti-Christ spirit is even more, more uh, prevalent like never before. Now they are talking about injecting babies with microchips. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but that's the one thing they want to do. They want to start injecting babies with microchips already. The baby hasn't even had a chance to decide whether they want this or not. And people are already saying, let's do this. How the enemy attacked what the enemy wants to do before a person has a chance to decide they want to, uh, to accept Christ as Lord and Savior. And he wants to get them quickly because what? Like the Bible says, he knows his time is short. And if, you, if you're living in this world and if you're watching this and you're hearing this broadcast for the first time and you don't know Jesus Christ, look around you for all those skeptics, for all those agnostics, for all those atheists who think God is just a myth. God is just a fairy tale. God is just something, um, something in your imagination. You have to be kind of, kind of, kind of uh, dull if you don't look around and see what's happening and thinking that somebody in the White House is going to make things happen. That is nothing but a lie because we know that eventually what's going to happen, the White House and all its representatives, Congress and all that, is going to be handed over to the Antichrist. It's going to be holding, given over to the false prophet. It's going give it, to be given over to the New World Order. And then what happens? There's no one. There's not going to be. They, what they want to do, actually, they want to bring in a third rep, a, a party. Now that you have a Republican Party, you have a Democratic Party. What they want to do is put another party behind because they're not satisfied with what there's in there because they, they don't have an answer. They think, oh, okay, uh, well, this is okay, but we're still not sure. 
there is a su such a state of confusion that people don't know where to turn to. So guess what? You can't. If you were to look at Donald Trump uh, 30, 40 years ago and even think about him being your president, you would probably laugh, 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 laugh your life away. Because back then we were not. We are right now. But since we're at a state right now that the American economy is collapsing and with trillions and trillions of dollars in the hole, they don't tell everybody this and that there are minimal jobs out there and there's people, many people who have quit the workforce entirely have given up looking for work and there's so much unemployment out there that people are going to say, where's the next, what do they do? They're going to cut in unemployment down the line eventually. They're going to cut welfare checks. They're going to cut SSI. People are happy now, but sooner or later, when the American dollar changes, all that's going to go up in smoke. When all these money that the per the little bit of money that we do have left is it, we we empty out our resources, what are we going to do? They're going to not going to have it no more. So people are going to start riots. People are going to start protesting even more so, and you're going to have people going crazy like you've never seen before. CNN is going to be on constantly 24/7. That's another thing. What we're looking at is a one world order network. We're not going to be able to tune in in different channels. They're going to take one channel. That's what's going to happen. It's not going to be like it is now that you can put on your favorite television shows. It's not going to be like that. There's going to be one TV, one show. You click it on, you're going to find out what's going on, and that's it. When you put it on there, you're going to have nothing to watch until they tell you what to watch. There has also been speculation and prophecies that they're going to come to a point that the NFL's is going to cut games because there's going to be so much riots, so much uh, 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 craziness going on in, in our nation that people are not going to be able to come out of their houses. People are not going to be, a, be able to go to these ball games because of, they can't even afford to, a ticket to go to a baseball game or a football game. It's not going to be any money to spend. They're, they're saying right now that America doesn't even have $2,000, a general survey. I think they said 40% of Americans don't even have $2,000 as a savings account. That's almost half of America don't even have $2,000 in their savings account. That's an alarming figure, if you ask me. And then they're saying 48% of America, if there was an emergency, they don't have three, three um, days full of, of perishable items in their cupboard. What is that? Food, water, canned goods. God forbid if anything was to happen and Russia was to come over here in China and start throwing missiles and bombs over here and everything was shut down, would we have enough resources in our home to survive? 48% said they didn't. That's a lot. That's, again, that's almost half. As a matter of fact, I think the, the calculations were 53%. I'm sorry. It was 53% of Americans don't have perishable, item, perishable items to hold them for three days. Listen, that's an alarming figure. That's more than half of people. You should look at your own cupboard and say, wow, God forbid if anything was to happen, could I survive three days without food and water? Then you have no choice but to fast. Listen, I, I, can't, I think what people need to do in this country is cut down on the eating. That's why we're so overly weight because we're taking advantage of the resources. There's going to be a time there is not going to be able, any availability to purchase food. They're going to close down gas stations. They're going to close down all these oil wells. They're going to close down stores. They're going to close things down because merchants are going to be so afraid to open up the stores because people are going to be looting. People are going to be robbing stores. Like I said before, people right now in the Bronx, New York, they're, they're robbing um, the taxi drivers at gunpoint and it's, it's out of control. And this is just the beginning. We've never had that before. Listen, people, the best thing people would do would just try to beat your fare and run out your taxi cab. Now they want to do that and rob you. God, luckily, you'll get walk away and you're still alive because they not only want to rob you, but they want to put a bullet in your head and make sure you don't blow the whistle on them. So it is a dangerous thing in this country, uh, and especially in New York City, to be in that type of business. So I'd say all this is not to scare, but to warn. As I always told people, the Lord has given me a prophetic mind and a prophetic uh, voice and a prophetic word to tell the people of God to be very careful and be well alert. As Jesus said, be ready. When I come back, will you be ready? Are you watchful? What are you doing? What are you watching? Are you turning on to, uh, the television and just, uh, just entertaining yourself? Or are you putting on something on the news or something that you can pray about? I mean, listen, what we're doing is entertaining ourselves and we're not preparing ourselves for the coming of the Lord. And when he does come, you know, there will, people are going to be surprised. And the, the people the most going to be surprised are the Christians. Why? Because they're not doing the work of the Lord. 
a lot of Christians are just sitting back and just waiting for the rapture. I'm, listen, I'm all for the rapture, and I want to be raptured too. But listen, until that day comes, we have a work to do. Like Jesus said, occupy until I come. Occupy means get busy, be active, do something in the church, do something on the mission field. Do something so you could change your community, your, your town, your city, um, where you live, or the places you hang out. The, you know, I mean, there's so much to change. It doesn't take it doesn't take a whole group of people. It can says he says two will put ten thousand to flight. I mean, if you just get hung up with one people, listen. I think people should just start should start doing prayer meetings uh, with other people online. They should get together and do some type of prayer calls and stop. You know, oh bless me, bless me, bless me. That that's the prayer life of the, the average Christian. Give me, give me, give me. Bless me with a bigger house with a with this or with that. And, and you know, I don't care about what everybody else is going through. I got problems, but listen. We have to do something because we're still on this earth, and many of us have a lot, with, a lot more to live. We have most of us on this call are, are 50 and under, or around that rareabouts. So that means you got at least 30 or 40 more years on this earth. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> it's time to do something, and you can do something on our knees. And I think what your people should do. Again, getting back to the food issue, I think a lot of Americans should start getting to the point of learning how to fast. Can we do without eating a day? an hour and I'm speaking to myself I'm not just preaching here I'm preaching to myself because what can we do God forbid that we don't have the resources can we don't go without a day without eating it might come it may not come but listen there's gonna be shortages they're gonna be famines it's been prophesied all over the Word of God but with the problem with America America thinks they're exempt for all the judgments and I have said this before on the last a broadcast that I did that the minute that Obama came into office this nation went into judgment the same way that they chose King Saul to be the king. They, they said, we don't want a God. We don't want God to be our leader. We want man to be our leader. And the minute they, this nation did that, we no. were up for a problem. No. This no. Is what we're going to do. I don't have to talk to you about Camille. I don't. I don't care. You don't, you don't change. Okay. Okay. You don't change. All right. Somebody needs to be muted. Yeah, I muted them. Go ahead, brother. All right, I got, I don't, maybe it's because I'm on the highway here, and I must have crossed the signal. But um, look, no, somebody just came in before coming in. That's all. Okay, I mean, I mean, like I just came in. Brother Gill. I don't know. He's going. He's probably under a freeway, so we gotta wait till he come back. It's a podcast has to do with an unbeliever and a believer, but we're living in a time. It's coming to a point when it's is people believers attacking believers in their own home because it's just how it is. Uh, when the carly steps in, what happens? People just lose it because they don't see. They don't see the. Well, they don't. They ha can't hang on. They don't see the blessings in their life. They don't see the finances in their life, and they've given up. Many Christians have given up. Many people are not who they once before two years ago. Christianity, I'm sorry, Christianity has taken a different spin because we live in a different world. We're not, we're in 2016. We're not in 2008. We're not in, or any earlier age. So what we're living in is a different land, a different spirit, a different tactic. Because what happens is this, brothers and sisters, when the time changes, so does the enemy. The enemy changes with the world because he, he, he educates even more what to do, his plans, and he says, okay, now we have this issue. Let's hit them with this problem. Let's hit them with that. We see they're hungry for this, so with their like this. Let's, let's just see, and that's the spirit of this taking up the, uh, the world. And a lot of Christians don't know. They're just riding out the wave. They're on the surfboard and say, okay, it's business as usual. No, the devil is a liar. You have to repair yourself and equip yourself. And this is the reason why prayer is essential in this day and age. If we're not praying, we're not hearing from God. You see, we think prayer is just a religious thing we do once in a while to say, ask the Lord to bless me, bless me again. But no, prayer is getting the mind of God for the current situation in our lives. Because there are so much stuff we're dealing with, we don't know how to deal with it. And sometimes we need insight. We need details because sometimes we read a verse of scripture and the details are not in it. There's a general command, a, a general teaching. So what does God do? God says, if you tap into me in my presence, I'll give you the ins and outs. 
I'll tell you which way to go. I will turn, turn here, turn that. Go this way, go that way. Speak to this one, speak to that one. So that's the key. And where a lot of people, unfortunately, are not doing that. This may not be popular. Like I said, I don't, I'm not a person that speaks popular words, and, and I don't tickle ears. I'm not here to be offensive, but I'm here to bring an awareness of what who we are as a body of Christ. And, you know, we have been lullabied away. We're sleeping. We, we need to wake up because we are. We are, we are pretty uh, – we are uh, not – who we think we are, and it's time for us to to uh, change things. And it's interesting when you read that chapter, and I'm gonna just finish up with this: that that he he mentions the signs of what to look for in the heavens. If you look around, look at all the volcanoes erupting all over the world, all the earthquakes all over the world. And Jesus said that this would happen in Matthew 24. Look at all the 20 tornadoes and all these weird things that were happening. Do you think that's by coincidence? No, sir, Bob, that is not by coincidence. Those are birth pains of what God is saying. He's is changing things up in the earth, and he's showing us warning signs in the heavenlies. This is the reason why that the weather is not the same as it always once was. We just got warm weather here in the East Coast. We experienced a long, long weather of cool weather, which is very odd. Normally by, by May or even April was... You see better weather, but I was still wearing a hoodie. That is not like that is also unusual. All over the world, look what in India the, the temperature climbed to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. There was people crossing the streets and their feet were sinking in the asphalt in the tar. That is how hot it was. So, is that normal? Of course not. That is also a sign of the times, of what's happening, the change in the atmosphere. Jesus said it. When you see this happening, when you see that happening, then you'll know that the time is near. Then you'll know that the time is short. But be watchful. Be prayerful. And then you will be able to, what? Be ahead of the curve. Don't be, don't be, uh, um, don't be, uh, I say you have to be proactive, not reactive. I always tell Christians that. Don't wait for something to happen. Be ahead of the curve. Be in a state of prayer so that you'll know what's going to happen so you can warn others. That's why I'm doing this today. That's why I'm trying to make uh, blow the whistle and warn people. It's no more business as usual. Don't get comfortable in your Christianity. We're not called to be comfortable. We're called to be ambassadors of the kingdom. We're Christian soldiers, right? But what does a soldier do? He, he works. He battles. He warfares. He doesn't warfare in the natural. But I'm talking the Christian is warfaring in the spiritual. Paul mentioned as a race. We all run the race, but we all don't get the prize, he said. Run in such a way that you will get the prize. I don't know about anybody here, but I want to get the prize. And that's what I'm saying today. Let's be more uh, uh, proactive than reactive. Amen. So, uh, Brother Mike, I thank you for this time that you gave me to, to share this. And uh, I pray that everyone here was blessed, edified, exhorted in the name of Jesus. Amen.